It's May 30th, 2025, and we need to talk about the tropics and our severe weather, both of which are active right now. We have Tropical Storm Alvin out here with 50 mile per hour sustained winds trekking off to the north northwest. And there's another pocket of convection down here that could get going. The NHC or National Hurricane Center gives it at least a 30% chance of development in the next seven days. Past that, we have a lot of convection down here that wants to move up into the Caribbean. Now, the GFS has been seeing a possible tropical cyclone trying to form out of this convection bubble over the past about three days through its model runs. And it does take it up into the north towards the state. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. It is still very early and we could see this drop off the model runs, but we're getting into June. We're getting into a very active MJO cycle for the Caribbean and Gulf. These waters are warm and we have to stay updated. As I said, here's Tropical Storm Alvin and that 30% chance of development from the NHC. Now let's move over to the Caribbean and take a look at our latest 12Z GFS run. As we move forward in time, you will see some of this moisture down here to the south begin to make its way up into the Caribbean. Now there's a few issues with this. One is we are moving into a phase seven and phase eight of the MJO. This typically will bring a lot more moisture and energy content to the Gulf and to the Caribbean. So this can add to our threat for tropical cyclones. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Of course, these waters are well warm enough for tropical development. Now, potentially as we get around the June 5th to June 7th timeframe, and remember this is over 160 hours out. So take this with a huge grain of salt, but we do have both of these tropical cyclones beginning to form one of these in the Eastern Pacific and one of them out here in the Caribbean. Now our storm out in the Eastern Pacific right behind me actually here, maybe helping this tropical system with its formation out in the Caribbean if this were to play out because it's ejecting a lot of that moisture out into the east. Now with the latest run, the one out in the Pacific looks to potentially dissipate, but this one out in the Caribbean wants to move north and potentially make landfall in Florida as a hurricane, moving up the state and then into the Carolinas. Now this would be a pretty bad scenario just because of the amount of moisture that we could see again up in the Appalachians. But again, do I think this will happen? No. Very rarely do you see model runs out this far be perfectly correct or even sort of correct. I am concerned with the water temperature, with our MJO cycle, with this convection that's moving up into the Caribbean. But there are so many possibilities of what could happen with these two systems here. For instance, the Euro doesn't even see this one in the Caribbean forming at all. It does see the one in the Eastern Pacific possibly going through that tropical cyclogenesis. So in my opinion, it's way too early to even be concerned down here. As I said in the beginning of my video, we're getting getting into hurricane season and we have a pretty favorable setup for an early start in the Gulf and Caribbean and that's why I'm pointing this stuff out. We want to be aware of what's going on. We want to understand the possible timelines, but there are so many different outcomes. We could have this storm go out to sea. We could have this not form at all. We could have a lot of wind shear across the Caribbean. We could have this tropical system form and head off to the west. There's so many different outcomes, none of which are more favorable right now, just because it's so far away. Again, we're talking 200 plus hours likely. So we'll keep our eye on it, but there's no reason to worry yet. And if you see someone telling you that a major hurricane is heading for the US, they're lying. Is it possible? I I guess, but the odds of that happening are very, very low. The odds of even an impact to the states of a tropical system in the beginning of June are still low until we get a little closer to this time frame. All right, now let's get into the severe weather that we are dealing with today. You can see we have a large marginal risk out here through the mid-Atlantic, down across the Southern Gulf state and across most of the Southeast. We do also have this large slight risk that includes portions of Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and then up there in the mid-Atlantic. And we have this enhanced region, which does include Eastern Georgia and a good portion of South Carolina and North Carolina. We have a small marginal risk up here in Northeastern Illinois and then Eastern Wisconsin. And you can see that out here over in Eastern New Mexico as well. Our focus today really is on this slight to enhance region. This is typically the area where you have the highest chance to see a severe thunderstorm. This right here is our tornado risk. We have a large 5% that does go through a good portion of the mid-Atlantic and stretches down across northern central North Carolina, including Raleigh. And we have that much larger 2% that does include states like eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, eastern Tennessee, a lot of Georgia and the Carolinas. There are already some storms firing up as I'm making this video in the early to mid-afternoon, and we do expect these to intensify as we push into the evening hours, which I'll show you in a second. We do have a 5 to 15% hail risk across these zones as well, and that enhanced risk zone that I was talking about is is wind driven. This is a 30% chance to see severe thunderstorms capable of producing damaging winds. Taking a look at our HRRR model, we can see these storms beginning to push just east of the Appalachians as we get into around 4 p.m. and they will be approaching the coast as we get into the evening hours. This right here would be roughly around 7 p.m. Eastern. 
This QLCS down here is our greatest concern for those strong straight line damaging winds. And where we have that 5% Tor risk is up here with this more isolated discrete setup. When these supercells have the sky to themselves, we can actually see a higher chance for a severe thunderstorm and especially a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. Our energy helicity index does show those greater helicity numbers up near where our upper level low is located. That would also increase your tornado chances, like I said, up through portions of Northern Carolina, up through Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic. Another important thing to mention today is our excessive rainfall potential, stretching all the way from central to eastern Kentucky and Tennessee up through almost Massachusetts. We have that large 5% risk for excessive rainfall and then a smaller 15% chance, both of which are notable though. So flash flooding is on the table for today, so let's make sure we're alert in these areas. Last but not least, moving into next Monday and Tuesday, we may see another trough trying to dig down and push up through the plains. This will bring us the possibility for some severe weather and potentially even an outbreak as we get into the beginning of next week. We've seen a slight downtrend on the amplification of this trough over the last three to four days, but again, model runs change all the time. We have to keep watching and see what happens as we move forward in time. And the Storm Prediction Center has already placed a day four slight risk and a day five slight risk through portions of the northern to central and southern plains. And we will be on severe weather watch for portions of Kansas, north central Texas, and Oklahoma tomorrow. I appreciate you watching this video. If you like this type of content, feel free to throw me a follow or sub. I make posts like this every single day, and I try and stream every single day to answer all of your questions. Don't forget the latest Connors Climate Corner merch is in the TikTok and YouTube shop, and all YouTube members and TikTok subs get access to my Discord that is updated every single day and full of other weather enthusiasts. It is a great time and it's only $3 a month. All right, I'll see you in the next video.